Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Coalesce 2022 recap webinar, where we'll be discussing all of the things that we uh, experienced at DBT's Coalesce in 2022. So just a few highlights of things we'll be talking about. Um, the semantic layer, DBT Cloud IDE, Python support, and some others you see here on the list. And we had a great time in New Orleans. It was really great to get our team together in person. Uh, since we work remotely, we rarely get to see each other. And it was uh, nice to be able to hang out with each other in person. Yeah, so one of the, the highlights of, I think, the week was really the announcement of the semantic layer. And so you might say, well, what is a semantic layer? Well, let's look at it from the, in the eyes of dbt labs uh, so when you think of common definitions of metrics key really key metrics across an organization would think revenue or what's a customer who's a customer you're able to define that really within dbt itself you know, dbt cloud uh, at the end of the day and so that you define it once and use it many times you think a lot of organizations where you may have multiple bi tools you could have data science tool, or most likely many tools there, you can have other applications that are pulling data from your data cloud. Now, dbt offers the semantic layer where you're defining the metrics in the code. You can see how it's a bit defined in that little image off to the right. You also can define its grain, the dimensionality uh, to it. And so there's potential to, for this to be very powerful. Obviously, time will tell a little bit. You know, dbt labs is not saying that this is the end all be all. Um, however, it's, hey, we think this is the right direction. We think the market is going to appreciate this. They've been doing a lot of you know, validation with other technical partners and customers uh, over this over the last many months here. And so it's going to evolve. Think of this as version 1.0 to the semantic later. Fast forward a couple of years from now, this is going to be very, very different and a more powerful and feature rich uh, capability. So you know, the initial release here. So you're defining those metrics within your YAML files. And naturally, because you're defining that within your YAML files, leveraging that within models, adding dimensions and filters, really all from inside your DBT project, the DAG is going to update uh, with this information as well. So now you can chase through, well, how is this metric being used and populated throughout your data ecosystem, you know, up into the point of tools that are consuming uh, these individual uh, metrics, which is a very powerful uh, feature. So some things to be aware of around the semantic layer. And right now it's in public preview uh, within the DBT cloud. So whether you have a develop individual developer, a team or enterprise account within North America, uh, it is available to you today. Once public preview ends, which is being touted in you know, the first half of next year, it will only be available on the team and enterprise plan. So naturally, there will be a, uh, we'll say, closing down or tightening of the ability to leverage a semantic layer. And you know, when you think of, well, I'm not sure which one I'm on, if you're going in the cloud.getdbt.com today, you will be able to access the semantic layer. If you're going anywhere else, you will not be able to. Perhaps in the future, uh, it will be available. And at this time, there's no additional cost to leverage the semantic layer. The future is unknown as to if or when uh, DBT wasn't 100% you know, sure what this would look like you know, from a monetization perspective down the road. Naturally, if you're on the team and enterprise plan, will it be baked into the pricing for those plans? Uh, really TBD uh, at this point. DBT Labs is figuring that this all out you know, as we're all testing and leveraging uh, the semantic layer uh, itself here. All right, so the, the cloud IDE uh, definitely has gone through a retooling. Uh, some of you may have seen it as it's been in beta testing for public preview testing for a while. You know, this definitely is the, the future. We'll call it the traditional uh, IDE will go away um, in favor of the new IDE. That's going to be more powerful um, than the current one. So you think of, well, when you say powerful, what do you mean? Well, because even comparing models and doing that side-by-side -side comparison of what's changed, it's a lot easier. Uh, the end user experience is a little bit more 
uh, easy to digest and, and work with the tool. And of course, performance, that was a big thing. Traditional users of DBT Cloud, you've noticed that, all right, you're working with, with models, compiling models, running those models. You know, at times it was, it was pretty slow. So really retooling of the architecture behind the scenes uh, will help speed up performance. DBT Labs is not done with saying, oh, performance is great. We're, we're in a good spot. They know they have more work to do. Uh, this is really, again, much like the semantic layer at version 1.0, you know, all right, we're a little bit further along the lines with the IDE. We'll say maybe version 2.0 uh, that we have here, but more and more improvements to come in the near future. So you think of uh, Python support, you know, more and more data clouds uh, are leveraging Python, uh, especially think of uh, Snowflake. Well, naturally, Snowflake is leveraging more Python. Well, so, so should dbt without having to go outside of dbt you can stay within dbt and reference your uh, python models uh, in order to build out uh, appropriate tables and expose those to your you know, analytic or data science aka your consumption layer of your data uh, so that was another cool highlight so a big part is around the certification dbt labs understands that Getting and having a larger community and offering more and more to that community, other than just a means to ask questions of different technical issues, product things. Well, a validation point from an outside looking in perspective is a lot of people, thousands of people are leveraging DBT. It's a natural evolution to start offering a certification. Uh, with that to help validate and prove out that yes, these folks or these organizations know what they're they're talking about and what they're doing within dbt along with following some of dbt's best practices so i believe they're up to approximately 400 people now across the globe that have passed the certification for those of you that have not taken the certification there's a lot of really helpful materials you know on our website on dbt's website for free pairing and ramping up your knowledge around the certification program right now there's just the single certification this is not an easy exam as much as you need 65% uh, uh, in order to pass the exam, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of, I will say ground covered uh, within the, the, the questions there. And DBT isn't looking along the lines of, all right, what are the trickiest questions we can come up with that no one in the real world will ever do? DBT has not taken that approach. They have said, all right, these are core fundamentals that everybody needs to know, but you should understand how they work because you have used this in a hands-on Form. This isn't something you're just going to go study some exam dump and say, ta-da, I passed the exam. That's just not how it will work. Uh, there's, you know, as much as you go through 60 questions within a two-hour time frame, there are a lot of different variations of questions that you could see. So one colleague of yours or somebody that you know took the exam and you start talking about, well, here's the questions that I had. Here's how I answered them. You may talk to a colleague and they say, geez, I didn't have any of those questions on my exam. Well, just because there's a large pool that these questions are, are pulled from. Uh, so definitely we have resources on our website as does DBT or, or ping us as well to say, hey, I'm not sure where to start. What's the best way for me to really ramp up and prepare? We're happy to walk that uh, through with you. But there's also a badge. And for some organizations, if you start to get over five individuals that have become DBT certified or certified developer, you will get you know, some tearing up in regards to recognition from DBT labs as they push organizations, whether you're partner or customer and reward those organizations with a tip of the cap and public uh, announcement uh, of validation that look, you have five individuals, you have 10, you have 20, more than that. Yeah, and we'll make sure to put the uh, link from DBT in the description here so that you guys can get more information if you're interested. So uh, DBT really asked sponsors of this event to go with a uh, experiential marketing approach where they're really providing a, a cool experience for attendees. And they really did a great job. It was it was over the top and unlike any other conference. Um, you can see here that um, Atlan had like a, a carnival theme. They had a spin the wheel. They even had a snow cone machine. Um, Continual had a makeup artist and 
everybody was talking about this makeup artist and getting their makeup done uh, to go out to the after party events. So that was super cool. Um, Light Dash did a create your own tie dye um, setup, and that was really fun also. So, um, and that's just a few of them. There, there were tons of really great booths and uh, we are planning to get a booth next year and don't know how we're going to top some of these ideas, but we are going to try, that's for sure. Yeah, I think in general, with this different approach, it also created an additional level of energy uh, of not only by being in the booth area, but just in general, you know, a lot of organizations walking around and maybe you're interviewing somebody just to say, hey, what are you, why are you here? What are you looking for towards the week? And just a lot of folks, you know, we'll say like-minded folks in a very good, positive way that, you know, hey, we have a, a similar journey that we're all on. We want to hear, we want to learn more. We think the product has a great start, but there's a lot more things within the product that we would love uh, to see. So for you folks that have joined virtually, hey, next year, if your organization allows you, highly recommend you going in person. Yeah, definitely. It was a great experience. And and the events they had, the after party events um, were just awesome. Um, the this These pictures are from the closing party they threw at Mardi Gras World. And uh, they had a piano band. You could make requests for songs. Um, they even had a Cafe du Monde beignet food truck where you could go and get beignets and coffee. Uh, the food spread was incredible, and I got to meet Tristan Handy there, so that was pretty exciting. Yeah, I think one of the, the cool things, and it really represents the, this conference and really DBT Labs as a whole, you know, everybody is very approachable. Whether you're one of the co-founders to anyone else you know, in their organization, they want to hear from customers. They want to hear from partners, and you know, not necessarily just, hey, here's everything I love or, you know, here's one of my main frustration pieces. Yes, they, they, they truly do want to hear that. They even ask, like, don't, no topic is, you know, off limits, you know, from a product perspective, you know, just come at it from, we want to understand the business perspective of why are you frustrated or what could you see you know, the product do better? And, and at the same time, you know, it is, Heather was able to get a picture with with Tristan. I mean, Tristan was taking pictures with, with many, many people there because you know, he knows, hey, this community, the people that are there in the online community and people that weren't able to, to actually go virtually or physically to the conference, you know, they're all very important people. They're the ones that have made DBT successful to date. And, you know, as part of that, you know, it's a more intimate experience, even though there's you know, 5,000 people there. It's still everybody has this common bond and it's pretty exciting to have. Yeah, and, and that kind of brings us to the next slide. I think um, the DBT community is super open and inviting. You can get answers on demand and there are more than one channel for the community. Um, as you can see here, Slack, Discourse, GitHub, they've got events. We've got um, a couple of unofficial DBT meetup groups we've started for the Midwest and the East Coast. Um, so look out in meetup for those and try to join our events. Um, so at the end of the conference, they had their kind of closing talks. And one of the things they mentioned there were their super early bird tickets for Coalesce 2023, which will be hosted next year in October um, in San Diego, California. So that's pretty exciting. And we'll make sure to include that link too in the description if anyone's interested in getting a jump on uh, getting their tickets early at a great price. Yeah, I'd even even say for those customers out there, with existing users of, of Coalesce, and, and you don't have to have this amazing use case. If you're willing to tell your story on behalf of your company, reach out to us, reach out to your DB sales rep and let them know that you're interested in speaking and sharing your journey as much as if you're early in your journey or you're a seasoned veteran and far down in your journey with dbt core or cloud there's so many folks out there that are just getting started and been using this for a while that you have something to share with everyone so don't feel that you're 
situation is too, you know, too specific or not interesting enough, don't worry about that. There's a lot of people that find value and interest in that. And so, you know, a great way for you to get, you know, a free ticket to get into uh, Coalesce, which that's a, a full conference badge that you get to hang out there for the week. So could be a way for some organizations that are tightening their belt on sending people to physical conferences. Hey, if you're presenting and it's really going to cost you, you know, say half or a quarter of what it would normally I cost you because you get a free badge, then, oh, hey, that's a great, that's a win-win for you. Yeah, good point, Mike. Um, I think that's also kind of attests to the the openness of the community and, and it's really all about learning and growing together. Absolutely. So we'd love to hear um, what you thought about Coalesce if you attended and if you want more insights or a one-on-one -on -one recap where we can kind of dive into some of those technical details feel free to connect with us. Yeah, and Heather, one question came in. Uh, I just wanted to address that here. And yeah. I, it, it's it's not just for, I think, any one of us. So I'll, I'll take a, a first swing and then you can add to it. Is what was the, the, the theme for the giveaways? Uh, you know, anything unique or something you hadn't seen before? I'd say there's, you know, for those of you that have been to some of the kind of the modern data stack type conferences over the last Five years or so, socks has been a big tradition. There were a number of, of socks uh, given away. Uh, oh, in yeah. the last last year or two, there's been this trend of having you know, vendor branded shoes. Now, those aren't necessarily a giveaway, <laughs> but it's just like Snowflake at the Summit Conference. Some Snowflake employees, they had Snowflake shoes and they look pretty cool. DBT Labs is a, has the same thing. They have their, their own shoes. So that's, you know, while it's not a giveaway, that was kind of a unique, cool thing. Uh, Heather, from your perspective, what were some of the things that stood out to you uh, from a from a giveaway, you know, meaningful and maybe more tchotchke? Yeah, like you said, the shoes, I thought that's um, super awesome. You got to be real exclusive to get shoes. Um, <laughs> I think we need to get some shoes. Yes. But, uh, you know, really, I think that part of it was just the, the experiential marketing that they did. Like, um, there were cold brew coffee bars and espresso bars and they came with you know free glasses or cups that you could take home with you um one of my favorite things to get is sunglasses because I'm always losing sunglasses so um I really like the sunglasses and and of course the socks the socks are awesome um lots of cool foods like like um kind of branded like one company, I believe they're called Starburst, they did like a galaxy themed donuts. They had a huge spread of these really cool donuts oh, that look great. Yes. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, not exactly something you can take home with you, but um, definitely worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah. And you think, well, all right, that's interesting that these companies are giving away all of this stuff and some of it's more beneficial or meaningful than, than others. And, and, and it's not that you just go up and you just take what you want and you walk away. Naturally, they want to have a conversation with you, get to know you, and to see if there's a potential fit for their service or their product. But it's done in a very low pressure way. It's not a mm -hmm. you know, car sales pitch or they corner you and like, you got to buy this timeshare and you're not leaving right. until you buy something. <laughs> it, it, it's very low key. And sure, they might scan, scan your badge. In worst cases, you get an email or two from a vendor. All right, so be it. But you know, you really, if you kind of let your guard down, just have a conversation like, oh, all right, these people have a similar background that, that I do. They have similar challenges. And, and yes, if you're talking to a particular booth, they have a, a pain point, you know, very specific pain point that they try to alleviate. But a lot of times there's a pain point that you have and maybe you find it interesting, maybe you don't. But at the end of the day, it is very, it's a very non-threatening experience and you get some cool swag along the way too. Yeah, it's a great way to stay in the loop of all the new products out there. There are so many different products and it's almost impossible to learn about what all of them do. But, you know, going to the conference and actually getting those, you know, one-on-one -on -one demos and learning about all of that, um, I think is a great experience and, and a great opportunity to keep yourself in the loop of what's out there. Thank you all so much for joining our webinar, and we hope to see you at our next event.